Hello, people of the internet. John Perry here, and today I'm going to answer a question put forth by YouTube user MW Skyrim. He recently watched one of our animations, Did Dinosaurs Ever Live Alongside Humans? And he wanted to know about carbon dating. So, in that animation, we talk about the extinction of the dinosaurs. And the last of the dinosaurs, the last of the non-bird dinosaurs, died out about 66 million years ago. We get this date by radiometrically dating the rock layers that those dinosaur bones are found in. They're found in the upper Cretaceous layer all around the world. Now, if we date the upper Cretaceous rocks found in China, or if we date the upper Cretaceous rocks found in America, we always get the same year. It's about 65 to 66 million years old. And we get this date if we use multiple different radiometric dating methods. Scientists are very, very confident about this date, 66 million years. Well, N.W. Skyrim's question is this. What explains carbon dating? Carbon dating is a type of radiometric dating. What explains carbon dating placing a triceratops horn at just over 30,000 years old? So, a couple years back, there was a group of creationists, young earth creationists, there was three of them, that got access to a triceratops leg bone. Some websites say that it was a Triceratops horn, but if you really dig around on the internet and find the source of this claim, you find out that it was actually a Triceratops leg bone that was carbon dated. And they cut the bone in half. They actually had, they claimed that they had several different types of dinosaur bones. But they cut these bones in half, they scraped out the carbon from inside those bones, and they sent it out to different carbon testing labs to figure out how old that bone was. Those laboratories ran their tests, and they gave back the results saying that according to carbon dating, which again is just one of many different types of radiometric dating, according to carbon dating, this bone is between 30,000 years old and 33,000 years old. That's the results that they got. Now, if you don't understand how radiometric dating works, especially if you don't understand how carbon dating works, you might look at this and think, oh my goodness. These creationists have revealed a giant conspiracy within the scientific community. All of the scientists who work on radiometric dating are all working together to hide the true age of dinosaur bones from the public. Now, if you do understand how radiometric dating works, and if you actually read their article and look at all their photographs, you quickly realize that there are two major flaws with their experiment. The first major flaw is that carbon dating cannot be used on dinosaur bones. Using carbon dating alone to try and estimate the age of a dinosaur bone is like using an analog clock to estimate how many years you've been in a coma. You know, well, let's see, I, I hit my head, I went to the hospital, it was three o'clock in the afternoon, I went into a coma, I woke up, now I look at my clock and it says that it's five o'clock in the afternoon. The doctor says I've been in a coma for seven years, but I know he's wrong. I've only been in a coma for two hours. That's essentially what these guys are doing when they use carbon dating and carbon dating only to try and date a dinosaur bone. I'll explain more about that later. The second big issue with their experiment that we notice, if we look at the photographs of the location where that dinosaur bone was found, is that the environment where they found that dinosaur bone was loaded with carbon contamination. And I'll talk more about that later as well. So let's start out with the first issue. They used the wrong radiometric dating method. If you look in a textbook uh, on geology, you will find a graph similar to this. This graph shows you a bunch of different types of radiometric dating methods and the date ranges in which those methods are accurate. Notice here that carbon-14 can be used to accurately date things that are between 100 years old and about 75,000 years old. So if something is older than 75,000 years old, you can do carbon dating on it, but the year that you get back is going to be wrong. You'll get a result, but that result will be wrong. Potassium-40 dating is good for things that are between about 80,000 years old up to a billion years old, and so on and so forth. If you're trying to date a sample, but you already have a pretty good idea of how old that sample is, you can use a chart like this to just figure out, you know, which radiometric dating method is going to be best for you. So if you're, if you're dating something that you already know is millions of years old, you would use something like potassium-40 to date that object. If you want to be really sure about your date, you would cross-check it with uranium-238 and uranium-235 dating. That way you can make sure that your sample wasn't contaminated, uh, giving you a false year. 
Now, if you want to date something but you have no clue how old it is, things get a little bit trickier. What you have to do is you have to choose three overlapping dating methods and test all three of those against your sample. If all three of them give you the same date, then you can be confident in that date. But if they don't give you the same date, one of two things is happening. Either your sample is contaminated, or you tried to use dating methods that are outside the range of the object that you are trying to date. If you suspect that this is the case, what you then need to do is select two or three different overlapping radiometric techniques and see if those will agree on a date. If they don't, you need to try two or three different ones until you find radiometric dating methods that agree with each other. So now let's look at the second issue, which is carbon contamination. When we're trying to do carbon dating, if we have a completely pure sample, one that has not been contaminated by outside sources of carbon, and our sample is older than 75,000 years, when we do carbon dating on that sample, it will say that the sample is 75,000 years old, because that's the limit. Carbon dating works from about 100 to 75,000 years, and once you hit 75,000 years, it just sticks there. It just keeps on giving you 75,000 years as your result. So, actually most labs can only go up to 50,000 years. These guys did not get a date of 50,000 years or 75,000 years for their, for their carbon dating. They got a date of 33,000 years. What that tells us is that their sample was probably contaminated. When we look at the environment where they found this dinosaur bone, we see the source of that contamination. There are roots all over the place. And actually, if you read the article that they wrote, they talk about having to battle with these roots as they're trying to dig up this dinosaur bone. They were all over the dinosaur bone. Carbon dating measures the levels of carbon-14 in a sample. And roots have lots of carbon-14 in them. So if those roots are growing through your sample, they're going to deposit carbon-14 in that sample and screw up your measurement. Furthermore, where we have roots, we also have fungus. Multiple different types of fungus form symbiotic relationships with plants. They grow these microscopic fungal filaments that attach to the roots of plants, and they exchange water and nutrients back and forth from plant to fungus. And fungus is particularly tricky when it comes to carbon dating because fungus makes a protein called collagen. Collagen is a protein that's also found in bones. When we're doing radiocarbon dating on bones, we actually dissolve the bone down to its collagen, and we use that collagen to actually get our, our, our date from. If you have fungus growing through your sample, you're also going to end up pulling out fungus collagen and dating that fungus collagen as well. So those are the two major obvious sources of contamination when we look at these people's research. There's also a third possible source of contamination. They actually wrapped this bone in plaster, and you see that when they're cutting the bone in half, they're dragging that plaster right through their sample. Looking at that just makes me cringe. Now, plaster does not have carbon in it. Plaster of Paris doesn't. But the companies that sell plaster don't sell pure plaster. A lot of times they put other materials in them uh, to make things harden faster. And there's no way to tell from these photographs and from this article what types of compounds might have been in that plaster. So that's another potential source of contamination, but Probably not. The, the major culprits of contamination in this situation are the roots and the fungus that were growing through that bone. So in summary, how do we explain the dinosaur bones that have been carbon dated to just 30,000 years? Well, we explain that in two ways. First, these people who are doing these experiments are using the wrong radiometric dating method for those bones. What they should be doing is using multiple different radiometric dating methods to make sure that they actually found an accurate date. Second, in the case of this triceratops leg bone, there are major signs of contamination. So there we have it. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have more questions about radiometric dating, if you want to really dig in and, and understand the, the, the fundamentals of how this process works, check out the Wikipedia article as a good start. Uh, better yet, just grab a geology textbook. There's a lot more information that you'll find in there. There's also this book where I actually got the graph that I showed you in this video called God's Word or Human Reason. This book was written by scientists who also happen to be Christians. This book goes through and points out some of the errors that are going on in the young earth creation science. So long for now. Stay curious.